moon in Virgo, Grand Earth Trine. And the moon's also going to be opposing Neptune and squaring over to Mercury. So the moon right now is in Virgo and it is going to be making this Grand Earth Trine, which is an amazing aspect, of course. But this aspect is going to be a little bit awkward and weird and austere. That is the reason because these energies are occurring in the early degrees of the Earth signs with Uranus being in Taurus and Jupiter being in Capricorn. Now, what makes this awkward is the fact that Jupiter doesn't really fancy Capricorn and Uranus doesn't really fancy Taurus. The moon of Virgo is kind of like a eh kind of energy. But of course, you know, when we talk about the earth element, we're talking about this physical reality. We're talking about making practical sense of things and also manifestation. So anytime that you get a uh, grand trines, especially, it is a rather large manifestation point that also comes off the heels of healing. So with this being an earth, we are definitely healing the way that we manifest and the way that we make sense and practicalize things. But what's going on with this one? Well, with the moon in Virgo, the moon, of course, is our reactions, our subconscious, and our emotions. So we are reacting and responding to Virgo energy, the Virgo-like dynamic, which is mutable earth, being able to adapt to our surroundings, being able to adapt to our physical reality and manifestations, handling the details, being meticulous about things so we can really adjust our reality and create it in the way that we, we, that we see fit. But since this is mutable Earth, this is talking about how change is constant, right? So the moon of Virgo, we are going to be reacting and responding to how change is constant. But what's another interesting thing about Virgo, especially in today's world, is that while Virgo does rule our day-to-day -day reality, a lot of people's day-to-day -day reality remains unchanged. They don't really do anything about it. They keep it the same. And this has bred within a lot of people, especially that don't necessarily like what they're doing, but they feel forced to based off of external circumstances. This has bred a lot of resentment within people. So when you get a grand earth trial like this, it's actually going to give us the opportunity to heal this resentment. But it's going to come in a very austere and weird way. Because with Jupiter being in Capricorn, like I said, Jupiter doesn't like to be in Capricorn. This is the, bringing this expansion and good luck energy to the Capricorn vibe. But Capricorn is the sign of hard work, diligence. How it takes time to build things. And damn it, Jupiter doesn't like to wait. But Jupiter has to wait now that it's in Capricorn. And then, of course, you have Uranus, the planet of rebellion, the planet of innovation, ingenuity, and science, which is essentially magic. Science is essentially advanced magic in many ways. If you really think about it, science created this phone, but as far as I'm concerned, this phone is a magical device. Uranus being a Taurus, though, it's about bringing these clouds down to reality. So in many ways, you could think about it with Uranus being a Taurus that we are in a bit of a fog right now. We are in a bit of a cloud. The clouds have come down to Earth. They've come down to the surface. And now we are traversing these clouds, these clouds of thought. And we can get lost in certain clouds of thought, of course. But it also is going to allow us to really innovate manifestation. When you think of Taurus, think of manifestation. It's literally fixed earth, so physical earth, you know. Taurus, right? But Uranus being here means that the relationship that we have to this is fundamentally changing for quite a while. You got to think about it. Uranus has like an like like 84 year cycle, I believe. So this is some pretty intense energies with this grand earth trial. We are manifesting a whole new reality, but we're definitely being given the opportunity to. Opportunity to. What's also interesting about this grand earth trial is that it's kind of actually signaling an event that's going to be coming soon, that being the new moon solar eclipse in Capricorn, which is going to be occurring at four degrees. This grand earth trine is occurring between two to three de degrees respectively, based off of what planet you're talking about. So, we are in many ways are getting a hint into what this new moon solar eclipse is going to be about. And of course, new moons are beginnings. Solar eclipses, though, are this huge destiny point, which means that we are in many ways going to be cutting off previous manifestations so we can bring in a new manifestation. Think about it as like, you know, you literally are cutting something off. 
or you could think about it how like maybe you have like a cigar and you have like those cigar clippers and you cut off a piece. Think of it like that. So there, this is definitely going to be previewing that new moon solar eclipse and how now we're going to be healing our manifestations, healing our day-to-day -day reality. Here's the other thing about this. Like I said, the moon in Virgo is kind of like a eh kind of energy, you know, but it's going to be squaring over to Mercury and Sagittarius. Mercury and Sagittarius has big thoughts, grand thoughts, grand thoughts about the adventure, right? It is the big picture, but Mercury doesn't like to be in Sagittarius, right? It rather travel around to many different, and rather like, you know, travel around in its local community, you know, and get a, the opinions of all, a bunch of people, maybe even compile them. But Sagittarius is like having to go outside our comfort zone and stuff where we are actually thinking outside of our comfort zone, essentially with Mercury. But with the moon screen, this energy, this does bring about a challenge. And I would argue to say that these energies rather be flipped. Maybe the moon would rather be in Sag and Mercury would rather be in Virgo. Because while the ruler of Virgo is Chiron, and I do believe that this is going to become more known and widespread within the next decade, Mercury is a traditional ruler here. So there's definitely going to be this sort of mental aspect to this moon in Virgo. Because now we're going to be reacting and responding to this Virgo-like energy, our day-to-day -day reality, the way that we give service to other people. But then the square to Mercury is going to be calling in to question what do we believe about what we can manifest? What do we believe and how do our thoughts reflect what we bring into manifestation? What are we saying to people? What are we saying to ourselves? That's going to be calm, uh, that's definitely going to be caught into question for this moon in Virgo. So this is interesting because we've had a lot of fiery energy. So this moon in Virgo is going to kind of, you know, cool things down a bit. So you're going to see people being a lot more practical and responding more practically and trying to think things through meticulously. But like I said, with these, with the Grand Earth trying to Jupiter, which doesn't like to be in Capricorn, Uranus, which doesn't like to be in Taurus, it's definitely going to make for a rather awkward time because you're going to find yourself thinking different thoughts. You're going to find yourself thinking in a big way, in a big picture with Mercury and Sagittarius squaring this energy. It's definitely going to be an interesting time. And we're just preparing, we're just getting even so much more closer to that new moon solar eclipse that's going to be occurring in Capricorn very, very soon. That is it for this video, and I hope that you all enjoyed it. This is Moon in Virgo Grand Earth Shrine, reacting and responding to our daily reality and how we can manifest a new